I don't know if you can see it uh, through the trees, through the forest, but right there, if you look real closely, is the Washington National Cathedral where we did some videos from um, about three weeks ago. The National Cathedral. There are many great cathedrals, mosques, temples, churches, synagogues, all over the Washington, D.C. area. Unfortunately, most of them, sadly, are not preaching the truth that I'm preaching. So we're going to set forth the truth scripturally, biblically, and accurately today right there if you look closely is the campus of georgetown university in the next couple days i'm going to be releasing a series of videos that i shot on campus at georgetown you see spout run right down there which runs into the potomac river which is like right there it's hard to see with the trees but uh, I highly encourage everyone to watch the videos that we're going to be releasing from Georgetown because they are extremely topical and they are very interesting in regards to what we're preaching and teaching right now. A lot of people, a lot of people call me Professor Mike, and that's a, a huge honor. I, I love teaching the Word of God. It is the passion of my life to teach the Word of God. And I, I love my students, and I preach anywhere and everywhere I'm invited, brick and mortar churches, live, over social media, with one goal. And that's to reach men and women, boys and girls, teenagers with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, I want you to take your Bible today and open to the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Now that's in the Old Testament after Isaiah and Jeremiah. We come to the book of Ezekiel. And I want you to open to chapter 38. You ought to read the whole, the whole book, but specifically to chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38. And there is a reason that I am wearing red. <laughs> there is a reason that I am wearing red for this video shoot. And the reason will become very, very readily, play on word, very readily obvious and apparent to you as we go through this. There is a red menace. It's not a phantom menace. It's not hidden. Socialism and the rise of communism, the expansion of communism, are not hidden. It's not a phantom menace. It's very out there. It's very open. Socialism is taking control in the United States. Behind me, right back there, across the river, about two miles, is the White House. Many of y'all saw me in the last couple weeks preaching from the White House. Why do we go over there? Why do we go over there? About three miles is the U.S. Congress and the Supreme Court. Why do we go there? We go there to tell them that the red political agenda of socialism which is taking over America, bigger and bigger government, is not the answer. No, red socialism is not the answer. But the answer is red. The answer is the red blood of Jesus Christ, the scarlet cord of redemption, the precious blood of Jesus that I've been preaching about is the answer for America, and it's the only answer for America. On Twitter and all, they're obsessed with politics and politicians and worshiping celebrities and personalities and stars. But I reject all that. Don't worship any mere mortal sinful man or woman. Don't idolize any man, woman, athlete, activist, actor. Worship only Jesus Christ. Don't ever say anybody is your icon. Don't ever say I idolize this person. 
Don't follow sinners. Follow Christ. I ask you to follow evangelist Mike Dial only as I follow Christ. That's what Paul the Apostle said. He said, follow me as I follow Christ, not as I follow cash. So I want to talk for the next few moments about what's going on in our world right now. Amen. What is going on in our world right now? And there's a little bit of a, I know it doesn't look that sunny on on camera but but there's a little bit of a glare so if I uh, if I wear my shades there's a reason I'm not trying to look cool I'm way beyond that <laughs> I'll leave that to Stephen Furtick and Craig Groeschel and Rich Wilkerson jr. and all the younger preachers out there I'm, I'm not trying to look cool I'm not trying to be a fool on camera I'm trying to win people to Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of y'all, if you think I'm old and boring, well, feel free to scroll. <laughs> you feel free to scroll. Feel free to be an old troll. But if you want to hear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God, then stay tuned. The news media, they tell you what they think is happening. But how many of you know only the Bible, only the Bible tells you what's really going on. Let me say that again. The news media, they report the bad news and they tell you what they think is happening. But the Bible tells you what's really going on. So as the news media is talking about the third world war, World War III, and they're talking about it all the time. Is this World War III? What's going on with Russia and Putin and China and the Ukraine? And these questions are being asked in the press, in the media, on cable news, on Fox, on CNN, on MSNBC. So what we're going to do today is we're going to forget all that and lay that aside. And we are going to give you from the Bible what the Bible says about the last days, what the Bible says about the end times, the Antichrist, the Great Tribulation period, straight from the Word of God, unfiltered, straight from the Word of God. Let me introduce, as we begin today, a new term. And it's the term eschatology. Eschatology, or an eschatologist. Eschatology is the study of last things. It is the study of the last days, of the end times. It is the study of biblical prophecy. And someone who is an eschatologist is an expert in that field, and that's what I am. I'm an evangelist, but I'm also an eschatologist. I have been studying Bible prophecy, Bible prophecy from the Old Testament and the New since March of 1983. You heard me right. I started preaching and teaching Bible prophecy when I was 16 years of age. As a matter of fact, that's how I came to Christ. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be one of these politicians over the river. I wanted to be a powerful person who was lobbied by the people of K Street. But look, you can't lobby yourself into heaven, K Street. I wanted to be president of the United States. I lusted after power. I wanted to be rich. But then I read the Bible. And I realized that the Bible was speaking to my generation. I realized that we were the terminal generation. I realized that everything that Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse, which is Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, was happening in my lifetime. Now, back in the 80s, we all thought Jesus was coming back right, right then. As a matter of fact, I spent most of my college and university and seminary days out preaching revivals in churches, holding meetings, trying to get people saved because I thought Jesus was coming then. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches that we are to expect him to come right now. We are to be ready. We ought to have what's called the blessed hope, which purifies us at all times. We ought to live every life in the conscious awareness that at this very moment, Jesus may come. But the problem was that the promised rapture, the rapture, 
that Hal Lindsey and others talked about, it it it, it didn't happen. <laughs> we we were we were we were looking for it. We were expecting it. We were praying for it. We loved scriptures like in the Gospel of Luke where it says that we should pray to be worthy to escape all that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. And just about every preacher worth his salt back then held to the pre-tribulation uh, doctrine that God will keep us from the wrath to come and take us to heaven. But a funny thing happened on the way to the rapture it never happened we were all going around talking about reading and promoting and preaching the late great planet earth the late great planet earth as a matter of fact Hal Lindsey became very wealthy and became a multi multi-millionaire and, and a best-selling author. You can tell how old this book is. The, the title has been smeared out, but it's the 1980s countdown to Armageddon. It should say Armageddon. The 1980s <laughs> countdown to Armageddon. But <laughs> a funny thing happened on the way to Armageddon. A funny thing happened on the way to Armageddon in the 1980s and 90s. It, it didn't happen. The We all back then, we read what I'm going to use today as a text, Ezekiel 38 and 39. And we had the old Soviet Union back in the USSR. The old Soviet Union, the Kremlin, invading Israel back in the 80s. And we all said it was going to happen. And, but then... But then the Soviet Union collapsed, Gorbachev arose, Perestroika came, Boris Yeltsin came, and it evolved into Vladimir Putin, and the Soviet Union lost much of its territory. Many of, of them now are democratic republics and West-leaning nations, such as the Ukraine, and the Russian Federation. Some of y'all saw my video from the Russian Federation Embassy in Washington that I released just a couple days ago. Um, and a lot of prophecy experts were shaking their head like, what just happened? <laughs> we thought we had it figured out. But that's the great thing about God. The Bible, <laughs> the Bible says that, 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 that the Lord works his ways in, in mysterious ways. And the Lord's ways are higher. His thoughts are higher than us. So just when you think you got it all figured out, God says you don't. <laughs> you don't know anything. That's what God's way of keeping us humble. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, no man knows the day or the hour of his return, only the Father. So much truth there. Anybody who sets a date, amen, is a kook, and it never happens, and, and we realize retrospectively that they are a religious cult and a cult leader. We're not about setting dates, but I want you to think about what Jesus said in that scripture. And you know, sometimes the best way to interpret a scripture or to know what a scripture is saying is to look at what it's not saying. Jesus said, literally, no man knows the day or the hour. Right. Absolutely. You can't narrow it down to a day or an hour. However, there is something called, let Professor Mike introduce you to another term, hermeneutics. Now, they say follow the science. Hermeneutics is the science, the science of biblical interpretation. It's not homiletics. Homiletics is preaching, but hermeneutics is the science of biblical interpretation. If the, the number one rule or law, spiritual law of hermeneutics is scripture interprets scripture. Are you listening to me? And if you follow that, you're never going to be deceived by cults or cult leaders. Scripture interprets Scripture. So when the Scripture gives signs of the times, and when Jesus gave signs of the times, you can narrow down the time of His coming to at least a generation. 
I spoke the other day right across the river, actually on this side of the river, at the Air Force Memorial looking down on the Pentagon. And I talked about Luke 21, where Jesus says the generation that sees the fig tree, which is Israel, begin to sprout leaves. Jesus says that generation, that terminal generation shall not pass away until, brace yourself, it's a stunning, staggering prophecy, until all things be fulfilled. Now think about that. So Jesus, though he doesn't give the date, he doesn't give the hour, he does give the general time frame and the generation. The generation that saw Israel become a nation in 1948 will not totally pass away until all things be fulfilled. Now, how many 120-year-old people do you know? Amen. So, tick-tock, 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 the clock is ticking. Israel is God's prophetic time clock. Tick-tock, tick-tock, the clock is ticking toward World War III, toward Armageddon, toward the return of Jesus Christ. And so the reason I'm preaching till I'm blue in the face all over social media at every church conference camp meeting that will invite me is because I'm heralding Judgment Day. I'm calling America to repentance. That's why I went over to Capitol Hill calling America to repentance. That's why we went up to New York City and we issued God's last call. That's why I issued God's two-minute warning and praise God over 605, 605,000 of you viewed that video from New York. Praise God, praise God, the harvest is coming in. It is the last harvest. It is the last revival. And it is the last move of God. And God has commissioned, anointed, and called Evangelist Mike Dial to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14, Jesus said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to every creature, and then the end shall come. That's why he hasn't come. A gospel has been preached, but not the gospel of the kingdom, which is repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The message of the cross, as I, as I preached the other day from the Luther statue in Washington, the new Reformation of Christianity. So I rejoice that uh, all of y'all are watching me and joining me. And now I want us to focus our attention narrowly like a laser on my text. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, and again, I'm not interested in your word or the Pope's word or the Dalai Lama's word or Muhammad's word or even my word. I'm not interested in the word of the Southern Baptist Convention or the Methodists or the Presbyterians or the Assemblies of God. I'm interested only in the word of Almighty God. And he says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Now, I want to let you know as we begin to look at this, that Ezekiel 38 does not stand alone. Cults begin when you only look at one verse or one passage and you take it out of its narrow context and you take it out of its context of the whole Word of God. There's many other places in the Bible where it talks about Gog and Magog and Armageddon. For your homework assignment, you ought to read the 16th chapter of the book of the Revelation where it says that he gathered them together. And I'll read the content. Read chapter 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. He gathered them into a place that's called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Where the whole world will be armed. And this is where World War III occurs. For the record, let me state unequivocally. The Third World War will not happen in the Ukraine. He may take the Ukraine. He may take the Ukraine. He may use the Ukraine as a base. This may be the beginning, the beginning of Soros. But the rumors of wars that we're hearing that Jesus predicted in Matthew 24, they're happening. But ultimately, 
what he wants is Israel. Ultimately, the who, the what, the why, the where, and the when of World War III will be in Armageddon, in the Valley of Megiddo in Israel. So, so, so there are other prophecies. It says that the kings of the east, with what looks like a 200 million man army, will, will cross a dried up river Euphrates and come to the same Valley of Megiddo. Russia, Rosh, Gog, Meshach, Tubal from the north. If you look on a map to the uttermost north of Jerusalem, if you draw a line straight up, you come to Moscow. Look at the word here, M-E-S-H-E-C-H, Meshach, Moscow, Tubal, Tobolsk. The north, the Russians, the east, the Chinese, from the west, the young lions of Tarshish, Europe, the Western forces led by the Antichrist. The, the Daniel chapter 11 talks about the kings of the south, the Arab world. And they all converge in Israel. And this is the last war of humanity. Again, let's go back to what Jesus said. No man knows the day or the hour. Exactly. I can't tell you the day or the hour. The tribulation begins, or the Antichrist is revealed, or the Battle of Armageddon is, or the Second Coming. But, using the principles of the Bible, and that's what we have to do. We have to apply the principles of the Bible to current events. The, using the principles of the Bible, we can pretty much have an idea. Now, you notice Jesus didn't say no man knows the generation. He didn't say no man knows the decade. He didn't even say no man knows the year. I'm just saying take the Bible literally. He didn't say no man knows the month. What he said, be, be very careful not to put words in Jesus' mouth or take away from what he said. Revelation 22 says if you add to the words of the prophecy of this book, God will add the plagues in the book to you. If you take away from the prophecy of this book, God will take away your name out of heaven. So we got to take the word of God for what it says and don't add to it and don't take away. But if you listen to a lot of the uh, preachers and teachers who come to you on your screens, on your screens, on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, over your television, websites, apps, they, they tell you all kind of flaky, flaky things. They tell you a lot of foolishness. They tell you a lot of fairy tales, a lot of fables, a lot of fiction, and a lot of fantasy. Doctrines of devils. Instead of telling you what God says. An evangelist might die. I don't add to the Bible. I don't take away from the Bible. At evangelist Mike Dial, I don't treat the Bible like the golden corral. I don't treat the Bible like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Take what I want and eat the rest. No, I deal with the whole Bible, all 66 books. Hallelujah, from Genesis to Revelation. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against Gog, or the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. Now, Ezekiel and the Old Testament was written originally in Hebrew. Amen. Hebrew. And if you, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I study after and read after people that are. Amen. Great men of God who have devoted their life, the Old Testament to Hebrew, the New Testament to Greek, and I read after. Praise God. And if you consult the Hebrew scholars, where it says here, the chief prince of Meshach, in Hebrew, it's more accurately translated, the prince, brace yourself, of Rosh. Rosh. R-O-S-H. Now that sounds amazingly similar to Russia. Russia. Meshach, Moscow, Tubal, Tubal. Okay. It would be one thing if an expert on Bible prophecy, such as myself, were talking about World War III. 
but they're talking about it on the news media. Joe Biden's talking about it. POTUS is talking about it. It's all over the media. Isn't it absolutely mind-blowing? See, Apple, Apple doesn't blow my mind. Microsoft, AT&T, Amazon, Alphabet, Google, they don't blow my mind. Blow my mind. You know what blows my mind? Bible prophecy. The word of Almighty God. That thousands and thousands of years ago, ancient men could exactly describe the traits, characteristics, and conditions of the world in 2022. <laughs> Blows my mind. <laughs> tech, 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 tech talks about you need information. An information superhighway. You need intelligence. You need data. You need systems. No, 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 no. You know what you need? You don't need another computer system. Glory to God. You need systematic theology. Glory to God. You need systematic theology. And that's why I'm glad your student, you're my students. I'm glad I'm your professor. We are going to set in order line upon line, precept upon precept. Correct. Correct systematic theology. Glory be to Almighty God, because that's the only thing that can save you from eternal hell. Now, let's go to the second verse. And say, God's telling the prophet what to say. Thus says the Lord, the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Now, literally again, the Hebrew scholars tell us that where it says chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, it says the prince of Rosh. Now, a lot of y'all, I have encouraged you and encouraged you and encouraged you, if you follow Evangelist Mike Dial, to also follow my uncle, who's on TikTok, at Daryl Dial. At Daryl Dial. The jets are flying over because... Reagan Airport and what a great man Ronald Reagan was. You talk about somebody who took on communism. You talk about somebody who brought down the Berlin Wall. You talk about somebody who said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan Airport is right down there. <laughs> so the planes are flying over, fulfilling Daniel 12.4, a great prophecy of the end times. Daniel 12.4 says that knowledge, it says men will move to and fro, the airplanes, the trains, the cars, the technological revolution, transportation revolution, and knowledge shall increase. Yes, the information. Yes, the intelligence. Yes, the data. Yes, it is a direct fulfillment of Bible prophecy, but that doesn't mean God gave it to you. Amen. God doesn't give you the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God doesn't give you a cathedral of images. It's a judgment. It's a judgment. It's a strong delusion. Amen. It's a strong delusion. And I'm trying to overcome the visual, verbal, virtual tech with the truth of the Word of God. With the truth of the Word of God. And what is the truth of the Word of God? God is against the chief prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal. My uncle, Daryl Dial, on TikTok, Daryl Dial Zero, at Daryl Dial Zero, is an expert on spiritual warfare. And that's the kind of warfare that really matters. Again, in the natural world, in the flesh, you see what's happening. But when you become a prayer warrior and an intercessor, God reveals to you what's really going on. And Daryl teaches, and the Bible teaches, and Paul taught, that behind these chief princes, behind these physical men and women that run Russia, China, America, so on and so forth, are angels, fallen angels, fallen angels, demons, devils, and evil spirits. That's the window into the spiritual world, which is all around us and surrounds us. And that's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Behind Putin is a mighty fallen angel. Are you listening to me? I said behind whoever the chief prince of, 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 of Rosh, 
Meshach is Putin. Gog and Magog behind these world powers, whether it be China and Xi or America and Biden. Amen. Macron in France. Every nation we could name, Iran, that's part of this Ethiopia, that's part of this end time scenario. Behind that physical man is a fallen angel, a demon, a devil or an evil spirit. And that spiritual world is controlling and dominating this natural world. Amen. So you need to look beyond the physical and look with the eyes of the spirit into the metaphysical dimension of spiritual reality that surrounds us. And that's why Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, said, for we wrestle not, oh, excuse me, it says that, 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 that we are to cast down arguments or imaginations in every stronghold that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Paul said that we are to we are to cast them down. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds, to the casting down of these arguments and these imaginations. But look, what's going to happen in Megiddo is not <laughs> is not some kind of weird video game where fallen angels and giants and spirits are let out of prison to fight this this spiritual battle. There is going to be Make no mistake about it. A battle in the spirit. Fallen angels who are bound in the bottomless pit are going to be released on the earth. Billions are going to die. Make no, make no bones about it. Make no mistake about it. But there's also going to be a physical war, a flesh and blood physical war in Megiddo involving the kings of the east. We know they're coming. Involving the great power from the north, Gog and Magog involving the Antichrist powers from the West, the young lions of Tarshish. So don't over-spiritualize this. Yes, there is a spiritual war going on concurrent with the Battle of Armageddon throughout the Tribulation. Yes, there will be a beast fallen angel who will possess the Antichrist. But the Antichrist will be a real flesh, blood, and bone person. Are you listening to me? It's easy to fall to the heresy of Gnosticism. But let's don't do that. Let's don't get swept away in Gnosticism. Let's stay with the Word of God. Now, the Word of God here says clearly, uh, both in verse 2 and 3, that God is against the ruler known as Gog and Magog. Two, two, two beings. God's, now, a lot of people say, oh, well, God's for me. God's for me. No, well, no. He can also be against you. If you're against God, God is against you. And these evil powers are trying to do one thing, annihilate the Jewish people. That's what World War II was about. That's what World War II was about. Hitler was trying, y'all heard of the Holocaust? Right over there across the river is the Holocaust Museum. Six million Jews died because of the anti-Semitism of the fascist Nazi known as Adolf Hitler. Well, the same anti-Jewish anti-Semite, anti-Semitic hatred that ruled in the 1940s and 30s is back today. And Israel is at the crosshairs. Israel is what Putin wants, not Ukraine. Israel is where World War III will be fought, and that is why God is against them. Amen. If you're against Israel, if you say, oh, Israel's not God's chosen people, God's moved beyond Israel, and you have this replacement theology, and God is not about you, you're stupid. Amen? Romans 11 says what it's all about. All Israel, glory to God, shall be saved. God's chosen people are coming home. Hallelujah. And before Jesus sets his feet on the Mount of Olives, all Israel shall be saved. They will welcome their Messiah, and they will say, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And how dare you deny that? How dare you call God a liar? Everything is about Israel. Now, look at verse 4. And I will turn you back and put hooks into thy jaws. Think of that. Hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring you forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen all of them clothed with all sorts of armor 
even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Now, you know, <laughs> there is so much. It's getting warm out here. I think spring is coming. Praise God. I'm going to take the jacket off. I think there is so much material in verse 4 here that I could teach until the rapture. Amen. Verse 4 is loaded. Now, let me, let me clear up some confusion that so many people have about the rapture. There is a great three-way split in the church, R.E., the doctrine of the rapture. Now, the word rapture is not found exactly in the Bible. There's a Greek word, harpazio, which means a snatching away, being caught up. But the concept or the principle is, amen. The Bible doesn't say computer. The Bible doesn't say television. The Bible doesn't say internet or app or sites. But the principles of the Bible can be applied to modern visual technology. I do that all the time. Your communications matter. Well, the same thing is true. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but the principle is. Let that sink in. Now, the word rapture is a synonym with the word resurrection that absolutely is in the Bible. So when you talk about the rapture of the church, you're concurrently at the same time talking about the resurrection of the saints from the dead. And that's why in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it puts them together. The dead in Christ, glory to God, the dead in Christ. I'm not talking about God's frozen chosen, the Presbyterians, so y'all Presbyterians can relax. That's a joke. <laughs> the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain, you remain spiritually alive, you remain physically alive, you remain standing, shall be caught up, and that's that word harpazio, together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. And that's what 1 Corinthians 15 is talking about. The dead, the dead, hallelujah, shall put on immortality. Mortals shall put on immortality at the last trump. Not Donald Trump, the Trump of God, at the last trump. So rapture, resurrection, are synonyms. Some people believe it's pre-trip. Some people believe it's mid-trip. Some people believe it's post-trip. But the fact is, Jesus is coming, and there will be a rapture. And any born-again Christian believes in the resurrection. And if you don't believe in the resurrection of the saints, you're not saved. Now, along the same lines... There's another power twin synonym combination in the Bible. Cross and blood. A lot of people talk about the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. And they should. It's all about the blood. Other people talk about the cross, the cross, the cross. But, but what they don't realize is when you say cross, you're saying blood. They're synonyms. They're sin-busting synonyms. Glory be to God forevermore. The blood and the cross. Now let's look at verse 4 closely. I will turn you back. I will put hooks in your jaw, pulling you down from the north, the uttermost north, and I will bring you forth. Your horses and horsemen. Now that evokes the book of the Revelation, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How many of y'all have ever heard about the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Amen. But I, I want to talk about one aspect of verse 4 that a lot of people don't deal with. And that is the fact that God is doing this. Uh, people in charismatic circles, Pentecostal circles especially, they make Satan the fourth person of the charismatic God, Godhead, and they give the devil too much credit. Are you listening to me? Satan's not omniscient. He's not omnipotent. He's not omnipresent. He's not eternal. Amen. Satan is not the one bringing the bowl seal, trumpet, vile judgments of the revelation. When the revelation talks about the seven last plagues, seven last plagues where a third of the world's population will die. Billions are going to die. Think of that. It's not the doings of the devil. The devil's not on a leash running, running rush on. You read the book of Job. 
He only does that which God allows him to do. Put that in your theology pipe and smoke it. No, this verse clearly teaches, and many others, that it's God turning you back. It's God putting hooks in the jaw, and it's God bringing you forth. Why? Because everything that's going on is a judgment against sin. God has given call after call. 9-11 was a warning from the throne of God. COVID-19, Omicron, Delta, all these things, the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes, the global warming, the climate change, the inflation, everything that's happened is a warning from God to do what? To repent, to turn away from your sins, to confess your sins and come back to the altar and live for God. But are we doing it? No. No, we're not doing it. Instead, we're Babylon. We're sinners. We're babbling on, on our tech, on our modern communications, as we boast, as we brag, as we bully, as we text and tweet and type and transmit idols, images, and icons to our own destruction. No, what's going on today? A woman rides the beast. The woman is the false church, the false harlot riding the beast we are to be the holy bride of christ but instead we have become the whore of babylon we now have an unholy matrimony the church aligning itself with the world riding the beast the antichrist the false prophet 666 and this is what the 17th and 18th chapter of Revelation teach, that the false church, the church that Jesus spews out of his mouth in Revelation 20, the church that says, I am rich, I am increased with good, I have need of nothing, the Laodiceans, the lazy Laodiceans who were getting laid and laying up treasures, the apostate harlot church, Jesus cast them into great tribulation. Jesus spews them out of his mouth. Now, now who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? Now you can add CBN and Daystar, and you can add teachers like Joel Osteen, Stephen Furtick, Craig Groeschel, Rich Wilkerson Jr., Joyce Meyer, Joseph Prince, Paula White, T.D. Jakes, and on and on and on represent the false church, the fake church. And God's judgment has set. And if you read Revelation 17 and 18, the Bible says God's going to burn this whore up. He's going to send a fire. If you read 2 Peter, the Bible said God is going to send a fire and all things are going to be melted, and all things are going to be dissolved. Is it global thermonuclear war? Some people believe that. Is it a spiritual judgment, God sending literal fire like he sent on Sodom and Gomorrah? Some people believe that. But, but whether it's global thermonuclear war that kills billions, or it's God's spiritual judgment and, and fire, however the case, don't split hairs, it's going to happen. And it's God judging sin. This explains why Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and he said, God shall send strong delusion. He didn't say the Antichrist or, or the devil. He said God. That's how God responds to sin. When you reject and spurn the cross, when you reject the word of God, your heart becomes hardened by all your hardware. And you don't have a soft heart for God because all you care about is software. Glory to God. You're not serving the master because all you care about is Microsoft and Apple. And the tech destroys you. And the earbuds in your ear and all the wires, all the wires of tech and your wireless plans. Look, you better forget about your wireless plan and you better have a plan to escape eternal hell of fire and brimstone. Are you listening to me? There'll be no wireless in hell. There'll be no hookups in hell. There'll be no video games in hell. There'll be no tech in hell. There'll be no idle phones in hell. Are you listening to me? There'll be no idle phones in hell. There'll be no smartphones in hell. 
Or are you understanding? There'll be no happy hour in hell. There'll be no hedonism in hell. There'll be no hookups in hell. There'll be no money. Those of you that spend your life chasing the almighty dollar, you know who you are. You spend your life. You spend your life trying to fill your wallet and not your heart. You fill your wallet, you fill your purse, you, you fill your pocketbook, you fill your bank accounts, your investments, your annuity, your IRA. But how many of you know Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures on the earth? How many of you know Jesus said, you can't serve two masters, God and money? Now don't shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. <laughs> That's a good place to say amen. If you can't say amen, you can say oh me, it's true nonetheless. It's not in God we trust anymore. It's in money we trust. Filthy lucre. Lucifer's filthy lucre. No, I don't love Lucy. Why would you name a girl? Well, look, that's why God is angry. That's why God is jealous. That's why he's wrathful. The word says the love of money is the root of all evil, but you spend your life chasing money. You spend your life chasing cash, but not chasing Christ. You have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, corporate America is not Christian America. Christian America is not corporate America. Capitalism, competition crushing, competition itself is not Christian. Free enterprise, getting rich, laying up, storing up for a rainy day, that's not Christian. Go back on my TikTok and watch them from the beginning. Whoop, rewind and watch them from the beginning and what I just said will make sense. Now let's get back to verse 5 and let's look at who are going to be the allies of Russia and of the kings of the east in those days. The first one is stunning. He says Persia. I was at the Iraq embassy videotaping uh, recently. And the modern nation of Iraq, that we call Iraq, is actually Babylon. But it was part of the Persian Empire and modern Iran. I said Iran. Yeah, the Ayatollahs. Iran, the Iran deal, is Persia. And he says Ethiopia and Libya with them. Gomer and all his bands. And we begin to start looking at Europe when we look at these tribal names. The house of Togarma, of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Now, Iran, this is a stunning fulfillment of prophecy. Who is the, who is the ally of Russia today? It's, it's Iran. It is absolutely stunning, ladies and gentlemen, that thousands of years ago, the Word of God would not only identify a great world power to the uttermost north of Jerusalem and a great empire to the east and the west, but also that his ally would be Persia, Russia and Iran, Russia and, and Syria, Assad, as all part of the, the Babylonian, the Assyrian empire. Well, the band is being put together again. Look at, look at verse 7. Be prepared. And prepare for thyself, thou, and all thy company that are assembled to thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Now, 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 verse 8 is staggering. Verse 8 is stunning. And I want you to understand, Peter said this too. Peter says in the New Testament that these prophets of the Old Testament, they weren't just talking for themselves of their generation. Daniel 12, it says, seal it for the latter days, for the time of the end. They were talking for us. They were talking to our generation, and, and verse 8 proves it. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Forget the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Forget the Mormon temple over there. I'm not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the last days. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land, that's Israel, the holy land, that was brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people. Now stop. It is staggering and stunning that the Bible here not only prophesies the diaspora, which means that the Jewish people are spread and scattered all over the world. It, it predicts that. And Jesus himself said it. He said the temple will be destroyed. It happened in AD 70. And then they were spread all over the world. And Hitler tried to finish them off in the Second World War. But not only does it promise the diaspora, 
But in the most stunning prophecy of all, it also says that they are gathered out of many people. God brings them back. And in 1948, they came back, Zionism, they formed the Jewish state. And there have been wars, I mean, uh, in, in 67, in 73, there have been wars to try to end Israel, but little tiny Israel which is just a speck of a nation physically, but it's a giant spiritually, little tiny Israel survives. And the Bible says they will be brought back, now resume our reading in verse eight, against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations. Glory to God. If you don't believe there's a God, wake up. If you don't believe there's a God, read your Bible and wake up. And they shall dwell safely, all of them. Now, now, that's extremely important, the word safely. Paul, writing to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, speaks of the coming of the Antichrist and the war of Armageddon. And he says, when they shall say, peace and safety, then cometh sudden destruction as travail upon a woman with child. The Antichrist, beast, false prophet 666 will negotiate a seven year ironclad peace agreement, non-aggression treaty that will make Israel be dwelling safely, living safely in a city of unwalled villages. Now we began to see this come to pass in the Trump administration with the Abraham Accords. And Israel signed, actually Carter administration, Camp David, then the then the uh, with Egypt, but then the Abraham Accords and Israel signs with these nations. Well, this is going to be expanded, and it's going to be expanded to include Russia, to include China. Someone is going to come on the scene, and I speak as a prophet of God, and they are going to enact a peace treaty to protect Israel, to defend Israel, and to stop this war that is being discussed right now, and Israel will dwell in this false peace. Maybe they supposedly end COVID-19 for a while, coronavirus, and everything is safe and everything is peace and everything is brought back to normal with microchip technology, the mark of the beast, and everything is fine and they think it's okay. But then we come to verse nine as I begin to conclude. Thou shall ascend and come like a storm a storm is coming thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land thou with all thy bands and many people with thee thus says the lord it shall also come to pass that the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought and thou shalt say i will go up to the land listen of unwalled villages i will go to them that are at rest that dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take a spoil to, this is what it's about, to take a prey. Now, again, a peace deal is coming. The beast will win the Nobel Prize. The beast will, for a while, prevent World War II. The beast, for a while, will be the hero of Israel. He will be like the Prince of Peace. He will be like Christ. Look at verse 13. Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto Gog and Magog, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to gather away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy, say unto God, thus says the Lord, in that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shall thou not know it, and thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, or the Hebrew scholars say out of the far north. This can only be Russia. If you look on a map from Jerusalem, straight up, it's Moscow. This is uh, the only way to fulfill this, Gog and Magog, is Russia, Putin, Russia. Out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. Now, I want you to notice who comes to Armageddon to be the opponent. We see that the aggressors are Russia and the kings of the east. But the kings of the south, Daniel 11, and here the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions, will come 
and they will oppose Gog and Magog, and they will come ostensibly to defend Israel. And so there you have half of the world coming to Israel to destroy Israel, and half of the world coming to defend Israel, and there you have the battle of Armageddon. Now, what does it mean, Tarshish? Well, you have to look at the word merchant. The word merchant takes you to Revelation chapter 17 and Revelation chapter 18. The merchant nation, the whore of Babylon, the whore of Babylon, the nation that made the whole world rich. The nation that is so rich that when in one hour, it says four times in one hour, so great riches will be made not. It says the whole world gathers on her shores crying. The one who made us rich is no more. It says there that the, the great the, the men of, of this merchant nation are the great men of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the only nation that can fulfill this and be the young lions of Tarshish, in other words, the ones who descended from Europe, the only nation that can fulfill this, that made the whole world rich, is the United States of America. Some people look at the, the whore as being the Vatican, and that may be part of it. That is from Western Europe. Amen. All false religion, yes. But most importantly, in the law of double or even triple interpretation, is the United States. And that's what I was saying from New York Harbor a couple weeks ago. The video that 605,000 of you saw. Last call. Two-minute warning to America because God is going to wipe out America. The judgment, and that's what all this COVID thing is. It's the beginning of the sorrows. It's the beginning of the judgment of God. And 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 billions, not, even, not only in America, but all of the world, are going to die in this thing. Because they're merchants. They're all about money. Corporate America. Money. Greed. Covetousness. The love of money. The root of all evil. God's had it up to here. God is fed up. God is mad as you know what. And God, thus saith the Lord, God is not going to take it anymore. Amen. So they all come together. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to summarize this. In verse 16, it says it's going to happen in the latter days. In the latter days. But, but, but notice in verse 18 how the war ends. It shall come to pass at the same time when God shall come against the land of Israel that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Now let's go to chapter 39. So not only does God pull them down with hooks in their jaws into Israel, then he destroys the invading army. And that destruction that we read about in chapter 39 of the invading army is what will make every Jew, every Israeli confess Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And when they do that, the trumpet of God sounds, the last trumpet, and Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, comes back to this world and sets his feet on Mount of Olives and he institutes a 1,000 year reign of peace called the Millennial Reign and he casts the beast, the devil, the false prophet, prophet into the lake of fire for a thousand years. Chapter 39, verse 1. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I'll turn you back, but look, and leave but the sixth part of thee. Glory to God. And will cause thee to come from the north parts, the north parts, the north part, the north part, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall, and thou shalt fall, thou shalt fall. The Russian Federation is going to fall. You heard it from Evangelist Mike Dial. You heard me prophesy it. The Russian Federation is going to fall upon the mountains of Israel. As Napoleon met his end at Waterloo, Putin will meet his end in Israel. Thou and all thy bands and all thy people, I will give thee to the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken, it says the Lord. And look at verse 6. This is stunning. I will send a fire, a fire, a fire upon Magog and upon them that dwell carelessly in the isles. This is what I was talking about from New York Harbor, from the Statue of Liberty, from Lower Manhattan, from Rockefeller Center, from Times Square. The fire of God is going to fall. And we read in Revelation 18 
four times, not once, not twice, not three times, but four times in one hour, so great riches shall be made not. Don't place your faith in Wall Street. Place your faith in God. One hour, so great riches shall be made not. That's what it's talking about. The fire will fall upon who? Upon Gog and Magog, but also, listen, upon them that dwell carelessly in the isles. Upon them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And, and you go on and read at the end of verse 9, they shall burn them with fire seven years. They shall burn them with fire seven years. There's the future. It's not positive. It's not good. It's terrible. It's tragic. But that's what I do. As a prophet of God, I give you the future. The future of America, the future of the world, the future of Russia, the future of China. It's not good. But you can make your future good if you get on the right side and if you get with God right now as I preach this message. As the Spirit of God has convicted you of your sin, I'm going to give you a chance to pray with me and make Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to just simply say this and mean it with all your heart. Dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I deserve to go to hell. I repent. Wash me in your precious blood. God, be merciful to me as sinner and remember me. And now... I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe you died and I believe you were resurrected from the dead and you're alive. So right now, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Savior. I accept you and make you the Lord of my life. Come in today, come in to stay. I dedicate, consecrate, and commit every minute of every moment, of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every month, of every decade, of every year, the rest of my life to you. And Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Send your comments in and your, and your testimony into my comments page. Follow Evangelist Mike Dial, Evangelist Mike Dial on TikTok for follow-up, for shepherding, for discipleship. Follow my uncle at Daryl Dial Zero on TikTok. He's great. He's a great teacher. You need to be in a good local Bible-believing church. You need to be baptized in water. You need to take the Lord's Supper, communion. You need fellowship with other believers. Stay tuned with me. Follow me, and we'll get you hooked up, and we'll, we'll figure all that out. I love you. I love you. Thank you for being with me today. Until I talk to you again, this is Evangelist Mike Dahl reminding you, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen.